a man sits alone. Though he speaks, the target of his words is unseen. To this invisible listener, he offers praise for a task well handled. His eyes narrow. He hesitates. Then, his voice a rasp, he murmurs an instruction. On to the next. The target of his words is revealed behind the scrim of a dividing wall. She also sits alone. In her hand rests a small scroll adorned with a face. Slipping the scroll into the folds of her robe, she stands and makes her response. Understood. She claims the assassin's life before body can meet Earth. In the silence that follows, she muses on her life. She walks a path of blood, a solitary path far from family or comfort. Had she ever smiled as that child did? Could she? Such thoughts swirl in her mind as the woman considers a life she knows she will never have. The girl stirs from a thin sleep, her features weary as a woman thrice her years. Her life is an unending blur of training that continues without mercy or pause. Bones creak, flesh stings, pain is her constant companion. Yet she forces herself down the hall all the same. When she arrives at the garden, a bellowing roar orders her forward. Coming. She replies in a voice devoid of all feeling. She readies an apology for her tardiness, knowing full well it will not be heard. As suspected, the man cuts off her words and begins to berate her without pause. You will learn to honor punctuality, girl. You are a tool of our master. And a tool is of no use if it is not present when needed. Thus begins another day of the girl's deadly training.
Her family has served their lord's clan for generations. When the lord decides an enemy needs to die, her family carries out the sentence. Her path had been laid before she was even born. The path of a trained killer. There is no freedom for her. No thought of a different way. The path simply was. The woman does not bemoan her fate, for she has never known another. Yet, when she thinks of the things she will never have, she feels a terrible sadness. But she presses on regardless, leaving such distractions behind. At some point, she realizes that rain has begun to fall. Through the droplets, she spies a castle with a dark and enigmatic aura. Soon she finds a lone guard standing before a gate. Moving without sound, she looses her sword. With death delivered, she sheathes her blade and presses on. The woman moves ever deeper into the castle in search of her target. Her mission is to kill the son of an enemy lord and halt his possible succession. The enemy army values blood. If the successor were to die, chaos will inevitably follow. Slaying the sun will create confusion, giving her own lord an opening for attack. She passes through the corridors and moves toward a reception room. Outside, the rain falls in endless gray sheets. A child sits alone, his frame made smaller by the size of the room. She recognizes the boy's face from her scroll. Without a word, she draws her sword and points the tip at the child's throat. Yet he simply stares at the cold steel, making no move to escape. As the woman studies the child's haggard face, she realizes something. This is no son of a lord, but instead a girl frocked in boy's clothing. The woman asks her target why this is. As if a dam has burst, the girl suddenly lets fly with a torrent of grievance. I wish this house and this entire nation would fall. The girl begins to tell her tale. I am not but a puppet who dances at my father's tomb. I'm no child to him, merely a tool to be used. I even denied my own heart and took false gender in order to fulfill my role. And as this house's tool, I live only to be killed. So please, just bring this to pass. End me. The girl's eyes turn to rest on the woman. This is who I used to be. Set to walk a path before I had even drawn breath. The woman's sword wavers. Her hand hesitates. Outside, 
The rain falls as if it was trying to blot out the very earth itself. And yet somehow, it feels quiet. The only sound is the rain. A long moment passes. The woman sheathes her blade. She then asks the bewildered girl, Did you mean it when you said you wish your house would fall? Shaking, the girl nods. The woman responds, Understood. Suddenly, the sounds of an army clattering into place emerge behind them. A score of soldiers bursts into the reception room. The woman's face is the very picture of composure. Come then, she whispers. The girl runs over and takes her hand. Why had she done this? The sound of the rain begins to fade. People cannot choose the station of their birth. One can scarcely even choose their own manner of death in this violent, bleeding world. But perhaps one can choose to let another live. I was a tool of my house who carried out her role. My hands are stained with sins beyond counting. I doubt this will absolve me of my actions. But it might make a nice gift to bring with me into hell. She can no longer hear the rain. Tears roll down the girl's cheeks. And on the woman's face is something almost like a smile. <laughs>